The south to Hatchet Bay was beautiful. Hatchet Bay's entrance is flanked by threatening rock walls, and we were hesitant to use our engine because of the drive leg and heat exchanger issues we were having. Fortunately for us, the winds were in our favour, so we prepped the engine as a just-in-case and attempted to sail through. Diana's filling up the coolant. We're going to try to enter into Hatchet Bay under sail, but this is our redundancy. Relieved that we were through the cut, we then slowly sailed onto anchor. Known as the safest harbour in the Bahamas, Hatchet Bay was named because the shape of the harbour resembles a hatchet. The cut was widened to 80 feet in the 1940s and offers a calm anchorage from all wind directions. We were happy to anchor there, especially as winds were blowing from the south and a squall was forecasted. had a super fun adventure. We did a the Hatchet Bay Cave. We were going to hitchhike up there and what we got was uh, as soon as we got to the, the road a car pulled up without us even put our thumb up. Took us for a tour through the cave. They came with us and then dropped us back. Um, just another example of the beautiful beautiful people here in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. The Hatchet Bay Cave system extends for a mile. It's well marked with trail strings and ladders however flashlights are a must. The cave has multiple levels and at low tide it's possible to walk all the way to the ocean side. However, it was high tide when we arrived, so we just found some stock footage of the water level. We exited via a rope ladder about half a mile from our starting point. It's in North Lutra. Oh, okay. Our new friends were awesome and kept sharing their knowledge with us, including their knowledge of a tasty treat. Dana, what are you eating? Tamarind. <laughs> and it's delicious. Describe it. It's like There's sweet and sour at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, that's because it's not ripe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that wasn't the thing like. That's okay. It's supposed to be brown. Brown? Mm hmm. <laughs> Refreshed by our treat, we walked to the edge of the banks and enjoyed the view. Later that day, our friend Emmett offered us a ride to the ocean side of the island so we could go hunt some sea glass. There's a crab on the beach. It's walking down the hill. <laughs> and look at this. Wow. Different colors. Oh, I think there might be three pieces in there. Is there a sea Yeah. We're doing pretty good. <laughs> so we've got some rare pieces here. Blue. That's a dime for, uh, <laughs> for size. And 
they look like they're black, but they're not. They're just really dark brown. We have some yellow in there. Yeah, some yellow. It's rarer. And some like bluey white ones. I think this is pretty fresh though. This one's pretty cool. It's coming up green on the camera, but it's actually like a bluey color. Okay, the full rainbow in Hatchet Bay, or Hatchet Bay, as they call it. The winds were keeping us in Hatchet Bay, so we hired a car to explore the rest of the island. Like the gutter. Yeah. This is very strange. So Greg's sitting on, like, the North American side of the seat, but has to drive on the Australian side of the road. <laughs> this is a new challenge for me. Our first stop was the amazing Glass Window Bridge, which is the narrowest point on the Eleuthera Island at just 30 feet. Originally, the bridge was a rock arch, but it was destroyed by a hurricane. It's a great spot to contrast the angry ocean with the peaceful banks. Where are we? We're in a water taxi. We're in a boat that's not our own. Water taxi! Next we explored the picturesque Harbor Island. Dunmore Town is one of the oldest settlements in the Bahamas and is known for its New England architecture and beautiful pink sand beaches. Eleuthera's famous pink sand is made by microscopic coral pieces which are bright pink and get mixed into the sand by the relentless surf. We're close to the Devil's Backbone, which is apparently a really intricate reef that people hire, hire local pirate, pirates <laughs> <laughs> hire local pilots <laughs> to drive their boat through. The Queen's Bars are located on the ocean side of the island. These natural pools were carved by centuries of waves pounding the rock. They fill up during the high tide and as the tide recedes, the pools heat up with the sun. The best time to visit the baths are during the low or medium tide. We however arrived when the tides were coming in and we didn't have the relaxing experience the name suggests. That's a big one honey. And it's warm. It's suspiciously warm. 
Just a little bit of swell coming in. Okay, maybe we should get out. The tide's coming in and we're getting a little scared. Here. The water got up to here and our stuff is here. We're gonna get out. <laughs> We're scrubbing the bottom again. This is the fourth time since we've been in the hunt. The clear warm water of the Bahamas encourages quick growth. But with not too much effort, we had cats away looking like new just in time for our next passage. The mailboat arrived on the morning of our departure, so we crawled out of the harbor at Idle and continued our journey north. We're currently back in the States doing engine repairs and we'll be heading north shortly. Check out our live map, link in the description, and if we're in your area, we'd love to say hi. Thanks for watching.